Hello, I greet you, and I greet you, as usual, in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How lovely it is to speak about God. But perhaps it's more lovely to speak to God. How nice it is to be one with God always, winning all temptations easily by God's grace. That's why I finish my videos through the power of God's grace. I can never insist enough on the power of God's grace. When God fills us with grace, the whole of hell would be afraid of us. And we love God continuously. We think of God always, day and night. Also at night, as soon as we wake up, our thoughts to God. We think of God lovingly. All right. Now I would like to continue about St. John Bosco. Don Bosco wrote about the life of one of his greatest friends he had at the seminary in Chieri. This friend was Luigi Comollo. In the said biography, he wrote, It was the 30th of March, 1839, 1839, the Vigil of Easter. The spiritual director of the Chieri Seminary, where Giovanni Bosco was a seminarian, seeing that Luigi Comollo's condition was worsening, willingly gave Giovanni Bosco his consent to stay with Luigi all night. Luigi Comollo was one of Giovanni Bosco's intimate friends. On giving him the consent, the spiritual director told him, be watchful. If you notice any serious danger, please call me immediately. Observe any symptoms and tell the doctor about them tomorrow. At 8 p.m. his fever was rising rapidly. At 8.15 it soared so high that he became delirious. At first he made low moaning sounds as if frightened by some phantom or other terrifying sight. About half an hour later he became half conscious, staring at the bystanders. Suddenly, he cried out in a loud voice and said, Oh, the judgment, the judgment. Then he began to struggle so violently that the five seminarians who were with him could barely hold him down. This horrible situation went on for three whole hours. Then, he finally regained full consciousness. For a long time he lay as though absorbed by some thoughts. But that look of sadness and terror which had plagued him those last few days at the thought of God's judgment abandoned him. And once more he seemed to be his old self, tranquil and serene. He loved talked and answered all questions. One might have thought that all danger of death was past. One of the seminarians asked him what had brought about such a sudden change in him. Only a little while before, he had been so sad and afraid, and then he was so jovial and smiling. The question seemed to embarrass Luigi Romolo, because he desired to give the answer to that question only to Giovanni Bosco. So he called Giovanni to move nearer to him, to make sure that no one would overhear him, and whispered to him, Until now I was afraid of that, because I feared God's judgment. It terrified me. Now, instead, I feel calm, and I am not afraid any longer. I will tell you, all confidentially, as my friend, while I was in terror of God's judgment, I seemed to be transported 
in an instant to a deep, broad valley where furious howling winds brooked no resistance. In the center was a bottomless pit spouting blazing flames like an immense furnace. From time to time, souls, some of whom I recognized, would tumble into that pit, causing great balls of fire and smoke to shoot up to the sky. I was so terrified at the sight that I began to scream for fear of falling or being heard into that frightful abyss. I wanted to go far away from that pit. I turned back in flight, but suddenly I was confronted by a multitude of horrible monsters coming at me to throw me in. In utter panic, I unconsciously screamed even louder, and then I made the sign of the cross. At this act of fate, all those monsters tried to bow their heads, but since they couldn't, they squirmed in agony and withdrew somewhat from me. When I realized that they had withdrawn from me to some extent, I tried to escape as fast as I could, but still I couldn't escape from that terrible place. Then I saw a huge mass of armed men coming to my aid. Fiercely and courageously they attacked those monsters. Some were killed and torn to pieces and the rest hastily took flight. When I saw that all those ferocious enemies either were killed or fled away, and consequently I was free of all danger, I began to walk through that broad valley until I came to the foot of a tall mountain. That mountain could be climbed only by a ladder, on whose every rung huge serpents were poised, ready to strike anyone who would try to climb up that ladder. I greatly desired to go up that ladder to reach the top of the mountain, but I was too frightened to try, for fear of those snakes might devour me. But there was no other way to go up. Downhearted, and exhausted, I was about to faint when a splendidly dressed lady took me by the hand and raised me to my feet. Then she said, come with me, you have done so much to promote my honor and you have invoked me so many times, so it's just that you should now receive due reward. The holy communions you have received in my honor have delivered you from the snares set up by the enemy of souls. She then motioned to me to follow her up that ladder. As she climbed, all the serpents turned their deadly heads away and did not look again in our direction until we were some distance away. On reaching the top, I found myself in a delightful garden where I saw things I never imagined existed. I was now safe and the gracious lady spoke these words. Now you are out of danger. My ladder is the one that will lead you to God, the supreme good. Courage, my son, courage, time is short. The flowers that make this garden so beautiful have been gathered by angels to make a crown of glory for you so that you may take your place among my children in heaven. Then she disappeared. These things filled me with such joy and peace that now, far from fearing death, I long for it and hope it will come soon so that I may join the angels in singing continuously the praises of our Lord in heaven. Thank you for listening. You who are listening and me, one day in heaven together shall be. 
Always by the power of God's grace.